Hello and welcome to Bulimia Sucks. I'm your host, Kate Hudson Hall, and thank you so much for listening. Now, this is a platform for people to share relatable and uplifting and inspiring conversations. And episodes are talking with people who are struggling with an eating disorder and sharing their personal journeys and their difficult journeys and their steps taken into recovery. And then also to people who have overcome their struggles with their eating disorder and plus to professionals who work with people with eating disorders. So it's a nice, nice variety of different people. Now, my book, Bulimia Sucks, I have an audio book out there if you're interested. Um, the audiobook is on Audible and Amazon and iTunes. So if you would like a free copy of this, I can send you the code. So if you email me at Kate Hudson uh, Hall at gmail.com, and then I can send you the code so you can download it for free if you're interested. So let me know. Now, the other thing that I've been busy doing is writing a book, a self-help book for people with anxiety. And I am very excited about this. And it is off with the four matters at the moment, and then it will be ready to go. So watch out for it. So it'll be coming in, oh, I don't know, September, October time. So keep a, I was going to say keep an ear to the ground, but also an eye to the ground, because you never know. Anyway, our guest today, I'm very excited, is Athena Crilly. Now, Athena is a coffee copywriter and the host of Finding Flow podcast, which covers all things women's health, hormones and nutrition. She is passionate about helping women to balance their hormones and optimize their cycles. We need to know more. We need to understand this more. And she has had a, a, a history of an eating disorder, anorexia, and other mental health struggles, and uses her podcast and social media platforms to spread awareness. I love it, Athena. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm excited to be talking to you today. Yay! No, thank you. This is great. Absolutely great. So I know that we're going to learn some valuable information here. So should we start when you, you know, when your um, anorexia started and that journey um, and, and how you sort of move forward from that? Yeah, sure. I'll try and keep it short and sweet because it's a long story that I could go into for hours and hours. But so I was first diagnosed with anorexia when I was 13. Um, I would say I had, you know, a happy childhood. I grew up with a healthy relationship with food and exercise. Um, you know, there was nothing tr like traumatic in my childhood. Um, when I was about 11 or 12, I remember having my first sort of thoughts about the way I looked and, you know, my body shape and that kind of thing. And when I was 13, I decided, oh, like I want to try and lose a bit of weight. I wasn't overweight. I, I would say I was just sort of, you know, like a normal sized 12 year old. I wasn't, I wasn't particularly slim. I wasn't overweight, but I wanted to lose weight. So I, I bought a wee fit which was all the rage back in the day, back in oh, 2009, yeah. this was. Um, so I bought a Wii Fit and I started using that every day. Um, and then I started at the same time, sort of slowly cutting down my food intake. And it kind of just developed from there, really. I, I don't know exactly what triggered me to develop an eating disorder over just going on a diet maybe it's my personality. I do have that sort of personality where when I think about something and I want to do something, it, it's kind of obsessive for me. Like I just get into it. So it right, could right. be that. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, my mom is quite fussy with food. She always has been. Maybe it was something to do with that as well. I don't really know. But anyway, so I was diagnosed with anorexia when I was 13 and then I was put into hospital. I was on like a pediatric ward, just like a, a general hospital ward. Um, and so basically that continued 
I went through phases where I was sort of doing okay and then I'd lose a load of weight again but there was never really a moment where I was free from all these thoughts going around in my head all the eating disorder thoughts Mm. did you have a therapist at that time sorry what was that did you have a therapist at that time I had a therapist I think when I was about 14 15 16 um but it it didn't do anything for me because at the time I just wasn't ready to change. I wasn't engaging in the therapy very well. I didn't really like the therapist. Mm, Um, That's a big part of it, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And Mm. with the NHS, you kind of just have to get what you're given. So I I wasn't in a position to go, oh, well, I don't like this therapist. I want someone else. It was just sort of, this is your therapist. So, and like I said, at the time, I was so in the depths of mating disorder. I just didn't, I, I wasn't ready to change. I wasn't ready to try and change so it just didn't work for me um and I haven't really tried it since then although I think if I did it now I'd be much more engaged with it yeah so if somebody was feeling that they weren't ready right now and they had an eating disorder what would you say to them that would maybe help them to um guide them towards reaching out for help and accepting the help yeah it's so tough because when you are in that situation, you, it's really only you that can change your mindset around wanting to recover. Mm. And I think the most important thing is to, to realize that the people around you are trying to help you. A lot of the time when, when you're so enthralled in this eating disorder, you think that everybody's working against you and, you know, they're trying to make you fat or, you know, in quotation marks, they're trying to make you overweight. The eating disorder knows better than they do. And you have all of these thoughts and they sound a bit silly, but you truly believe them at the time. So I think it's just, I would just say to anybody, the people around you are trying to help you and, you know, embrace that help and that support because that is really what's going to help you get through it. Yeah. And that, because I remember when I, um, when I got help, at the, at the time, I didn't want to get help, um, but I allowed my mother to drag me to the doctor. Um, and then slowly, slowly from there, even though I didn't want to do it, I, I did do it. So I kind of pushed myself, even though I didn't really want to do it. Um, and over time, I kind of, um, the seeds were beginning to set of how I could change So even if you don't want to get that help, what have you got to lose for your future life? So you will gradually over time open those doors because unconsciously those seeds will begin to be set in your mind if you did, even if you didn't want to, but you did um, go with a little bit of help. Yeah, exactly right. It's very, it's very difficult at first, but then as you start to go through the recovery process and maybe you go through therapy, you, you Mm. speak to doctors, dietitians, you, your mind does start to open up a little bit more because I think with eating disorders or well with anorexia, at least, because that's what I have experience with, you do get very inside your own head Mm. and you kind of, you kind of lose touch with reality because your thoughts are so disordered and so just not realistic, but you truly believe them. So yeah, having those other people speaking to you helped to put things in perspective a bit more. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Athena. And I think that uh, we do, we get wrapped up and engulfed in these thoughts that we have. And it's difficult to hear anything else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So going back to your journey, Athena, so what, um, so what happened after that? After, after? So after you decided that you would um, get a bit of help? Well, I mean, it wasn't actually the same as you. It was actually my mum who um, dragged me to the doctors when I was 13. I, I was kind of in denial at that point. Um, And I kind of just stayed in the treatment system until I was like, well, until I was 18, because then I was discharged from the pediatric services. Um, But I actually then went into a specialist mental health hospital when I was 18. 
Um, and I was in there for a few months and then actually self-discharged much to the doctor's dismay, but um, I self-discharged from there. And I actually did, when I came out of that hospital, I actually did quite well for, for like seven to eight months. Oh. And I really thought, right, this is it. Like I'm finally starting to recover. But then I went to university and that just triggered everything to come back so I started over exercising I started really really restricting and I went straight back downhill again um so I ended up going back into a different specialist mental health hospital when I was 19 um and that was the final hospital stay out of five and then sort of after there I kind of recovered sort of by myself really I wouldn't say the hospital stays necessarily helped me that much and I honestly don't know how I managed to recover. Like, I don't really know what I did. I think it was just that I'd got to that that age where I'd met some really amazing people that are still like my best friends now. Mm. And I think meeting people who genuinely just really care about you, no matter what you're going through, I think that that is so important. And and what yeah, did you, how did the they support, thing. sorry, Athena, how did they support you? Well, just by, just by being there and, you know, inviting me to go out and do things and they just made me feel really normal. Like, you know, we would sit and eat pizza and go on nights out and have a drink and have a laugh. And it was just something that I had never done before because my eating disorder was always number one. It was always priority. And I had, I lost all my friends during secondary school because I was just so in my own shell and, I didn't really want to speak to anybody because I was just going through so much. So it was amazing to actually make genuine, true friends. And I think that's, that did really help me. Yeah. And what, um, so if you could turn back time, uh, what would you say to that 14 year old you now with all the, you know, the wealth of knowledge that you have now? What would I say? I would say, that recovery is 100% possible and you need to believe that you can recover. I've actually got the words believe that you can tattooed on my back. And I got that just just before I got, I discharged myself from the first mental health hospital because it's, I think it's just such an inspirational quote. I believe that you can and you will. Um, But I think, I think I would tell myself that because I always remember saying to my dad, I'm never going to recover from this. Like, when I was 14, 15, I was just like, this is my life. Like, I don't see any way out of this. And yet here I am today and I, I'm fully yeah. recovered. So yeah. I would just tell myself that you are going to recover and it's a hundred percent possible. Yeah. Yeah. And what does recovered mean to you? Recovered to me means not having any eating disorder thoughts, not worrying about, missing a workout or not exercising for a week or two weeks it's about eating what you want when you want because you're listening to your body and it's just yeah it's just about I guess living a normal life that's not so focused on exercise and weight and calories and food yeah yeah and having a having freedom in your mind to think about other things and what you re- actually really want to do. Yeah, exactly. And not focusing solely on the way you look or how much you weigh and that kind of thing, because you are so focused on those things when you're in an eating disorder, but they're so unimportant to your life. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so what advice would you give somebody with an eating disorder? Oh, it's so tough. Um, I would Such a say... a question, isn't it? You go down, go down so many different routes with that. Yeah, it's so tough because obviously everybody is so different and yeah. some people respond really well to certain things and other people don't respond well to them, like therapy, for example. Um, I, I would say to anybody, really, just reach out for help, whether that is to your parents, to your close friends, whether that's to a doctor whether you get a therapist, like just finding help is helpful. Even though I, I was there saying, oh, me at 14, I didn't want the help. But like you said, when you actually get that help, you then start to, you can then start to change your mindset. And that is ultimately 
what is going to lead you to recovery. So get help. That, that's my advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Athena, so what were your reasons to recover? I know you, you know, um, you know, if you were to know, what would they be? I, um, I, do you know what? I think by the time I recovered, I was just fed up. I was fed up of living my life the way I was. It was, it's honestly having an eating disorder is just like torture. It really is oh. like, you can't escape your own head. You know, you just feel it's like you're constantly chasing something that is unattainable. Um, and I think for me, recovery was just, I just wanted to live my life again. I just wanted to laugh and joke with my friends and not worry about things and, you know, go on crazy nights out and get a takeaway afterwards and not stress about, oh, am I going to be able to work out tomorrow? And that kind of thing. It's just, yeah. It was just for the freedom. And I was also, I, I do want children one day. And that was a big thing for me. Um, when you have an eating disorder, when you have anorexia, most people lose their periods because of, you know, all the malnutrition, the hormonal imbalances, we could get into that, but that was another thing for me. So my bone health, there's just so many different things. Um, I, yeah, I, I could go on and on. <laughs> it was mainly really because I was just so fed up and I was really concerned about my health because it had been so many years at that point. And, you know, I, there's still health issues that I'm going to have with me for the rest of my life because of my eating disorder. So yeah, it was mainly those two things really. Yeah. And tell us about your podcast because you talk about all sorts of things in there. Yeah, sure. So my podcast is called Finding Flow. It was originally called Finding My Fit and it was a basically like a health and fitness podcast. Right. But then I kind of I kind of felt like it was a bit misaligned because I, I, I'm a lot more passionate about talking about women's health in particular and, you know, eating disorder recovery and periods and, you know, all of that kind of stuff that nobody really talks about yeah, yeah, um, yeah. over health and fitness. Cause there are so many health and fitness podcasts out there and, you know, what, what can I bring to the table that anyone else can with that? Nothing really. Whereas with, you know, women's health and hormones and the menstrual cycle. I have a lot of experience with those kind of women's health issues and that kind of thing. And I'm just really passionate about spreading awareness about it. So that is really what I focus on in my podcast. Okay. So what have you got that you can share with us that you, you know, your, your knowledge say um, about, well, let's start with the nutrition, you know, that people can learn from you. Oh God, where do I start with nutrition? I am, I think the main, I'm trying to think of like one specific thing that I would say. I think one thing I would say is don't, like in the media, there's so much about, you know, carbs are bad for you, fats are bad for you. Sorry, that's my cats like jumping around. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um. If, as a woman in particular, your hormones, your hormonal production relies on you getting a nice range of nutrients. And in particular, fats and carbs are the things that I see so many women restricting, yet we need healthy fats, so unsaturated fats and carbs to support our hormonal production. And particularly if there's any women out there listening who don't have a period, so if they've lost their period for whatever reason, yeah. um, whether it's, you know, under eating, over exercising, being stressed, don't restrict on carbs. If you are trying to get your period back, that's, that's going to sort of be a detriment if you are worried about eating carbs and gaining weight and all of that kind of thing. So yeah, I think that's, that's the one thing I would say if I could pick anything but there's it's such a wide subject <laughs> yeah. yeah um and so um okay and so what about you know the hormones um, um and, what about them <laughs> you know working with those to be able to you know kind of maybe balance them out I mean what what would you suggest to somebody yeah I think the main thing with particularly with reproductive hormones in women is to, if you are, you know, eating a healthy diet, you're eating enough food, you work out a reasonable amount, you know, you just exercise 
in a healthy way but you still feel like there's something that's not right and your some of your hormones just feel imbalanced it might be your stress and that is such a big factor that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to hormones but mm. cortisol which is produced when you're stressed can impact literally every reproductive hormone your lh your fsh your estrogen your progesterone and if any of any one of those is too low it can interrupt your cycle um and even if you're having periods you might not be ovulating if you're overly stressed. So you can ha- you can bleed, but you didn't release an egg, which obviously becomes very important if you're trying to get pregnant. So it is really important, I think, for women if they are if they do want to conceive or even if they don't, just to get your hormones checked every now and then. It's just a simple blood test that your doctor can do, but it will give you, you know, like a snapshot of what your hormones are sort of doing and I think that's so important um so yeah I would just say like manage your stress yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a really really big factor in hormones yeah it's figuring out what you can do differently because stress just affects everything doesn't it as well oh yeah like I mean if you're stressed yeah. it, every part of your life is affected you know your mental health you're mm. you've, you're tired you don't want to do anything you can't concentrate so you've got anxiety and, that will you know hugely intensify as well because of the stress yeah 100 percent. and obviously it's not that easy to say just cut out your stress like it's really not that easy is it but if you know if you are truly concerned about your health it's really important to just find some kind of way to reduce your stress whether it is reducing your workload or maybe it's taking more time for yourself. Maybe it's stress management like journaling or yoga. And I know they're quite stereotypical things that are journaling, but it can be really helpful if you're feeling stressed to just yeah, get all of your works. thoughts out there. Yeah, journaling really works for so many people. And even if, you know, you, you know you've done before, it didn't work for you, um, you know, give it a go. Because, it's, you know, it's also about getting those feelings out. And that's what we need to do, those blooming feelings, we need to get them out. And that's a great way to do that. And you mean, you, you know, you just chuck it away afterwards, after you've written whatever, if you, you know, if you don't want to keep it, if you're worried, um, burn it or, or, or something you don't, and you don't even have to read it back. No one has to read it. It's just getting it out of your head. I actually, um, if I want to journal, I actually type it. Like I just type it on a Word document and that way, if I really don't want to read it, I just delete it. (laughs) So it's not even, it's not even written down on paper. So that can be really helpful as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And we were talking about um, the hormones and, um, you know, if you did want to have a baby in the future and in episode 93, I had somebody called Katie Bradbury on and she is a registered nurse and a nutritional therapist as well and she helps people specifically struggling with fertility particularly people that have had or have an eating disorder so if you're interested check out that podcast because that that is is very helpful and in the next few weeks she's going to be joining me again to talk further about that so if, if that is an area that you feel you would need some extra help with then check that one out and keep your ear to the ground again and I think with regards to the stress I think it's good that you know maybe everybody I mean we all have stress stress lurking around every corner for all of us and it's looking at you know how you're feeling and maybe you could think about one thing that you could do today one very very small thing that you could change today to be able to reduce your stress and I think everybody should do that right now Thank you. (laughs) So, Athena, so tell us um, uh, more about your podcast and um, the different areas that you discuss. Yeah, sure. Um, So my podcast, I release an episode every week and some of them are just me talking away about something and some of them are guest episodes. I try and um, get sort of people who have had either personal or professional experience with something to do with women's health. It, it could be about periods or PCOS or, you know, 
fitness and exercise during pregnancy, any kind of anything about that. I'm, I just sort of talk about, I try and focus mainly on, you know, periods and hormones and the menstrual cycle. But I do like to talk a little bit about pregnancy as well, even though it's not something I have personal experience with. I like to get other people on who do have experience with pregnancy. Because I think, you know, talking more about the hormonal changes and the symptoms and how to exercise during pregnancy. I think all of those are so important to talk about. And again, like we don't, we don't really get taught about those things. We just sort of, a lot of us learn about pregnancy by getting pregnant and trying to figure it out. Whereas if, if we talk more about, you know, the different changes and things during pregnancy, just as a general society, then people are going to know what to expect. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so what's it like to be recovered? Amazing. (laughs) It's so nice just to, after so long, just to be able to not worry so much about food and exercise. (laughs) Yeah. And be able to eat, you know, normally. Yeah. Which is huge because that's what you, you know, what you always want to be able to do, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And how can people find you, Athena? Uh, yeah. So people can find me on Instagram at Finding Flow Podcast. Uh, flow is spelled F L O, not F L O W. Um, so I'm on Instagram. I do have a TikTok, which is just my name, Athena Crilly. Um, I upload my episodes onto YouTube and my podcast is on every podcast platform out there really um and that's just called finding flow again flo um so yeah that, those are the main places that people can find me okay great and why is it finding flo well i thought it was a bit of a play on words because i wanted it to talk i wanted it to be a bit about sort of finding your flow and you know getting into the flow of just life but i wanted it also to be sort of related to women's health and you know like you know, we call periods like ant flow, yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah, like yeah. FLO. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll do finding flow because then it's sort of related to like periods. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's clever. I did wonder because, you know, it's the, the flow, the cycle, isn't it? Yeah. So I thought I'd try and be clever and do that. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, Athena, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's been so much fun. Yeah. You know, for your sincere and honest journey and 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 for all the work that you do with your podcast oh thanks a lot helping so many so that's fabulous thank you it's been a pleasure yeah thank you athena so that's all for today's episode of bohemia sucks and thank you to everybody for listening and make sure that you subscribe to our podcast on apple itunes or spotify or wherever you listen and also make sure you show some love your favorite podcast by leaving us a review on wherever you listen so thank you very much to everybody for listening to athena and i and i look forward to speaking to you in the next episode